Yo guys, quick explain a video on how the brain works according to uh, the MIT neuroscience department and uh, I'm gonna illustrate everything on this whiteboard. Bear in mind I have terrible drawing skills but I will do my best to try and illustrate this. So essentially the brain works like a giant network of information. So if you think of um, internet uh, like uh, telecom towers, right? So telecom tower one, and telecom tower 2 and they're all connected by these giant cables right um, and the message gets sent from tower 1 to tower 2 and then tower 3 tower 4 to tower 5 etc right so the message goes from one place to the next place to the next place so the deliverability of that message really depends on the connection between the towers this is very similar to uh, the brain with brain cells. So in the brain, all information, so that is all your thoughts, feelings, memories, everything, like all cognition basically, all of it gets transferred like from telecom tower to telecom tower from brain cell to brain cell. And essentially in the brain, you have billions of these brain cells Right, and they act like the telecommuni telecommunication towers. So the messages. So if you have a, like a um, you know a thought or a memory, for example. So you have a memory, and that memory, in the form of electro an electrochemical signal, will get sent from one neuron to the next neuron, to the next neuron, next neuron, next neuron, and then eventually it goes to wherever it needs to go in your brain. So your memory region, for example. And so that's basically like neurons, right? And they basically run your brain. But it's the connection between one neuron and the next neuron um, where neurotransmitters come into play. So essentially, a sending neuron and a receiving neuron and when you have that thought or, your me or that memory, that message has to go across from one to the next. Right, simple enough. But here's where it gets kind of insane. Between each neuron, there is a gap, a very tiny gap. And this is called the synaptic cleft. And what happens in this gap is that the message or the electrochemical signal has to essentially jump across this kind of no man's land in your brain. And it does this by neurotransmitters. So neurotransmitters, well, your, each of your neurons is always producing lots of neurotransmitters. But some people produce a lot and some people don't. And it's very much linked to your nutrition and what you eat. And this is where nootropics come into play. So you can see here that the message goes to the end of one neuron. And if you actually look at neurons, um, they all have these kinds of crazy like tentacle-like arms, right? And these are all linked to other neurons. So you can see like another one would be like over here somewhere and this neuron would also have the tentacle-like arms. So like that. Okay. I told you I'm like the world's worst illustrator, so. But <laughs> you can kind of get what I mean here. So these tentacles are called axons, right? So you have the neuron cell body here and the axons, which are the tentacle-like arms which kind of connect to the other neurons. Now bear in mind that these tentacle-like arms aren't physically connected to the next neuron's tentacle-like arms. Instead, like I said, there is this gap in between each one. So the sending neuron and the receiving neuron, these uh, axons aren't physically touching, so the message going across is not seamless 
it's not like a wired connection. There is an aspect of a wireless kind of transmission here, which is why your neurotransmitters, basically what they do is they package up the signal from the sending neuron. They then jump across this gap called the synaptic cleft, and then they arrive at the receiving neuron. So these neurotransmitters basically have a mission of delivering the message. They're essentially chemical messengers. And what happens is that not all of the neurotransmitters actually make it across because this is, you know, no man's land, it's a dangerous territory, and like, you know, not all of them are going to be able to make it to the receiving neurons, or the receiving neuron, which is why it's so important to have enough neurotransmitters to be able to send that message to ensure that it actually gets delivered to the next neuron or your next brain cell. And of course, um, in a lot of cases, uh, when people lack a certain uh, production of a neurotransmitter, for example, acetylcholine, which is the main neurotransmitter in the brain, uh, which is uh, created by getting enough choline from your diet, so for example, fish, eggs, chicken, uh, things like that, um, if you don't have enough of those, then these messages aren't actually going to be sent from brain cell to brain cell. And if the messages aren't being successfully delivered, then, well, like, you know, you're going to suffer in terms of uh, uh, overall cognition because, you know, messages aren't being delivered from brain cell to brain cell as efficiently as they could be. And the symptoms of uh, lack of acetylcholine, neurotransmitters being made, are, you know, brain fog, poor memory, uh, poor overall cognition. And also, by the way, 90%, that's 90% of the general population are uh, deficient in choline, according to uh, some opinions as well. So anyway, uh, back to this. So essentially, the neurotransmitters, you have to have enough, of neuro you, you have to have enough neurotransmitters to be able to kind of get a good shot at being able to send messages across your brain from neuron to neuron. As well as this, the receiving neuron has these things called receptors. So if we look at these like that, and the receptors are kind of like, you know, the, the catchers or like, you know, the targets. So if you were to throw a ball, then like, you know, the uh, other fielder needs to be able to catch the ball, right? It's the same with this. So this one shoots out the neurotransmitters and the receiving neuron um, has to catch those neurotransmitters and kind of process that information and that, uh, that message. So to be able to do that, the receptors need to be sensitive which is why if, for example, you're taking lots of, you know, heavy uh, like dopamine drugs or something like that, and what happens is that these receptors actually get bombarded by neurotransmitters and they kind of like die off, right? So in the end, if you only have like, you know, a few receptors working, then again, the neurotransmitters aren't going to be successfully received and the messages aren't going to travel around your brain as efficiently as they could. So that's basically kind of like, you know, how um, messages get sent around the brain. Um, it's all a giant network of neurotransmitters and neurons and receptors, I guess. So what you want to make sure is that you're creating enough neurotransmitters and you're also your receptors are sensitive enough to be able to receive these messages. And of course, also, there are several neurotransmitters in the brain, and they're all responsible for a different kind of uh, message as well. So, number one, we have the main one called acetylcholine. So that's the first one. And that's basically memory. This is why people call it the learning neurotransmitter. So most messages of memory and things like that, like learning information, this creates a certain, well, a certain neurotransmitter responsible for sending these messages is called acetylcholine. And you get that by taking choline supplements or by eating chicken, fish, eggs, etc. There is also dopamine, which is uh, another favorite neurotransmitter to kind of boost um, why? Because it keeps you motivated. So it's the motivation neurotransmitter. I'll do another video on like each of these individual neurotransmitters and how you can like, you know, boost them and kind of explain them a bit more. 
but um, acetylcholine, memory, dopamine is motivation. So if you don't have enough dopamine neurotransmitters being made, you're not going to be really motivated to do anything because those messages of motivation, that feeling of motivation in your brain isn't actually going around uh, because it's not being delivered from brain cell to brain cell. There's also serotonin, which is pleasure. So if you know somebody who constantly suffers from the blues and sadness for like no reason, they may be low in serotonin neurotransmitters. Um, there's also, uh, let's have a think, other ones. Oh yeah, GABA, this is a big one. So GABA is relaxation. So these are kind of like the main neurotransmitters. But the difference here is that GABA is what you call a inhibitory neurotransmitter, which basically means that it stops the flow of the other ones called excitatory neurotransmitters. So there's also like, you know, neurotransmitters kind of like, you know, adrenaline, things like that. And these all stimulate the brain in, in some kind of way. So if you have adrenaline, which is your flight or f fight or flight neurotransmitter, so when you sense danger, this neurotransmitter gets released, which then kind of puts your body in full alert and, you know, ready to kind of like, you know, run or like, or fight or something like that. Um, a lot of the times, um, actually, people have too much adrenaline for like no reason, right? So they're not in apparent danger, but for some reason or another, these neurotransmitters are being released. And the way kind of a normal brain would solve this is by releasing this thing called the GABA neurotransmitter, which, like I said, is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So if you think of it kind of like a traffic warden, it puts like a kind of limit, it says stop, you know, and the other neurotransmitters kind of get limited. So in the end, not too much adrenaline is flowing around your brain or not too much dopamine is flowing around your brain. Uh, so it kind of like, you know, regulates uh, neurotransmitter release. And for people who don't have enough GABA neurotransmitters, essentially everything's kind of going crazy because messages are being over delivered. So it's kind of like, you know, the opposite of not having enough acetylcholine and your memory function like, you know, sucks because like, you know, uh, memories aren't being delivered. In the case of low GABA, these information are being over delivered. And the symptom of that is anxiety because you're like overthinking everything. So people with uh, particularly low GABA levels can benefit from drinking, say, green tea or, you know, even drinking alcohol. They're both like, you know, GABA um, enhancers. So personally, like I, like, you know, um, I've always been low in GABA, which is why I usually craved drinking, you know, like a glass of wine or like beer after work because I just couldn't like, you know, uh, relax because my brain is constantly thinking of work and like, you know, all those messages like, you know, overthinking, right, anxiety. But of course, if you have a glass of wine, then like, you know, you start increasing your GABA levels, which then puts a kind of stop on all of these excitatory neurotransmitters here. And the result, relaxation. But of course, don't drink lots of wine or alcohol because you don't want to be an alcoholic. But, you know, I would suggest drinking uh, Japanese green tea. So like matcha tea, things like that. They also increase your GABA levels and you'll find that incredibly relaxing if, you know, anxiety or relaxation is a problem for you. As well as that, you know, you can uh, try the nootropic called L-theanine, which is the actual ingredient within Japanese green tea that makes it uh, relaxing. So essentially, um, if you're doing a kind of like, you know, a DIY fix your own mindset kind of thing, you want to look at which area of your brain um, is kind of uh, suffering, right? So are you poor in memory or do you lack motivation to work? Are you always procrastinating? Um, are you constantly sad or are you constantly, you know, agitated and not relaxed? Because as soon as you figure out, you know, which area you need to improve, you can kind of see the neurotransmitter involved um, and like kind of uh, uh, 
the neurotransmitter usually that you're deficient in, and that's usually linked to your diet. So for example, like low serotonin means that you're not getting enough of the L-tryptophan uh, amino acid, which creates serotonin. Or like acetylcholine, you're not getting enough choline, which is from, you know, like fish, chicken, eggs, things like that. So you can always kind of link it um, to nutrition because nutrition creates neurotransmitters and new neurotransmitters run our thoughts, emotions, feelings, everything, right? And I'm gonna be doing a kind of like um, a neurotransmitter kind of quiz, uh, uh, which uh, you'll be able to kind of, you know, put in uh, some of your information and you'll be able to see which neurotransmitters you may be lacking in and what food you can actually uh, change or what food you can eat, sorry, to correct these deficiencies and end up getting you that mindset that you want. So, you know, a productive mindset where you've got great memory, great clarity of thought, you're motivated to work, you feel pretty good and you're relaxed as well. So yeah, that's basically um, it for this video. Um, hope you found it uh, interesting and useful. Um, basically, the important things to remember are, you know, uh, the brain is made up of a network of neurons, also known as brain cells. And these brain cells send information to other brain cells around your brain via neurotransmitters, which are essentially chemical messengers um, that deliver this information uh, around uh, between neuron to neuron. And also, of course, you know, receptors um, are the uh, kind of like, you know, the catchers or the fielders or the targets. Um, that receive these neurotransmitters as well. So three things uh, to remember and yeah, till next time.